So here's the 1460, and we have found the dreaded final drive leak. So combine was parked and found a puddle of hydrant underneath it seeping down from the wheel from this inner hub right here. So if probably some people know, um, there's a kind of a common issue where if once the bearings start to fail, uh, these act, these uh, final drive shafts will start to kind of sag and cause the seals to start leaking. So if you ever see the seals start to leak on these, you should probably do something about it because it could mean that the bearings are going out. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this. We have a takeoff one from um, a um, scrapyard that uh, has a one-year warranty. And then in the meantime, we're gonna rebuild this one. But just to give us time until harvest, we'll put that one on. And hopefully that one will get us by. So um, it's pretty straightforward. The biggest thing is have the combine safely supported. So, you know, have um, some heavy enough cribbing, a jack, and I got some wood in here to kind of support it in case the jack sags, which it kind of looks like it has a little bit. And then you're going to need probably uh, a skid steer or a loader or something to get the wheel off. So this had 28L26 tires on it. Um, but what we did is we just came in from the side with forks and worked pretty well, actually. So you might have to kind of bump it up and down to kind of bust the wheel off the hub. Um, but it actually came off pretty decent. So uh, once you get that off, then all you have to do is... Um, take out there is a little uh, bolt in here that holds this coupler that holds your axle shaft into your input on the final drive and then um, you'll need to get a, a strap and probably we're going we're to use the uh, engine hoist here and um, lift it off so all, all you got to do is take out the bolt all around here and that'll take it off so we'll work on that and hopefully have it swapped out here shortly So here's the old one, got it off. Um, definitely probably has a input shaft seal that's starting to go to behind this cage. There's a seal on the bearing in there. So um, definitely probably needs new seals and bearings. So hopefully over, uh, maybe uh, over the winter we could try to rebuild it and keep around as a spare in case with the other side or something happens. But uh, these generally, have, they have been known to fail, so it's definitely a common thing to look after. Um, it can be pretty catastrophic if they do fail. You'll probably, this may snap off, and uh, you know, you could cause damage to the combine, go for a heck of a ride, um, and you definitely don't want that to happen out in the middle of the field. So now that we got it off, we have the axle extension and our axle coming from the transmission which the splines look good and the coupling looks good too. So that should be okay. Uh, one thing what I'm gonna do before I put the uh, other one back on is just take a wire wheel and clean this off. There is a backing plate that goes like that, that goes on there. So we'll clean some of that off and put some anises on it just to kind of keep it uh, Keep it uh, going together nicely, and if it ever had to come back off, um, not be seized on there. So it actually came off pretty easy. Um, just a little engine hoist like this works pretty good. Um, I was just probably doing it with two people, one person. It's kind of tough to kind of continuously run the jack and keep the 
final drive kind of even to get the bolts out and it will there's not a very good way to sling it there's really not a lifting eye or anything so um, I just have a strap set around here and then you can kind of guide it off that way so and you don't have to take off this cover unless you're gonna rebuild it I just took it off to kind of see what was going inside um, when you take these off definitely drain the oil out because they hold about three three and a half gallons of oil so um, get a little bit of weight out of there but we took it out because we did notice that the uh, plug did have quite a bit of metal on it um, but that could be normal too the common has about 3600 hours so um, but we'll see when we get into it hopefully in the next few months uh, what was actually going on with it so and hopefully uh, we prevented any catastrophes from happening this fall all right so here's the uh, replacement final drive installed so we got the backer plate in there all cleaned up the bolts are in I haven't torqued them yet but they're snug I'm actually in the process of replacing them so I'm just kind of doing one at a time uh, one thing to keep in mind is this bolt here and this bolt here that go into these back ears back by the uh, coupler for your input shaft those actually if you notice they have a, a flat washer under them where the other ones don't just a lock washer what's under that is actually a alignment bushing it looks like a cone so you need to make sure that those cones those alignment bushings go back in those two holes and the book actually says to tighten those two first and then um, just kind of sequentially take it up I believe the book says like 355 to 400 foot pounds of torque uh, going into cast so Keep that in mind, you're gonna need a pretty big torque wrench or a big breaker bar or something. So um, once you get that back on, then get your coupling back together. So get the bolt in, and then a little cotter key goes in there just to keep the bolt from coming out. Um, that's pretty much it. So at this point, you can take out the breather and fill it up. Your oil level should be at this front plug here. So it should just be starting to come out of there. And that's basically it. And then put the tire back on, and away you go. So, again, a couple people. And one other thing, too, when you go to put this on, um, you know, I just took it off with the one strap around here. But uh, when um, we put it back on, we actually had a, a strap here. And then what we did is on the back, uh, the bolts, because these final drives can go on either side of the combine, you've got bolts uh, here for if it was flipped for the other side and we just ran some three quarter inch bolts through there and with some washers and you can either use a short chain where you can adjust it with your hook and links or a short strap to kind of even it out on the cherry picker so um, but one thing too before you do that maybe just check the thread holes you know make sure they're clean uh, we end up running a tap through them so you need a three quarter by ten tap um, which probably not everyone has but pretty easily available to get if you need one so that's pretty much it so again keep an eye on the oil on these things you know make sure you don't see oil coming from there um, sometimes you'll see these leak the input side that's not as concerning since you don't have the weight of the combine being held up by that but the problem is with these is you gotta remember you have the whole weight of the combine on that that bearing so that bearing is showing signs of failure you definitely need to do something about it so hopefully this helps if uh, anyone's trying to replace these things